Hello and welcome back and today it's time for another NAS comparison. Today I want to look at the brand new DS1621XS Plus that Sonji have just released now in the autumn slash very very early winter stages of 2020 and I want to compare it against what I feel is its predecessor. I want to compare it against the DS3018XS. Now straight away you may have noticed there's nothing there, nothing there at all. Unfortunately, I do not have a 3018XS here in the studio to work with, but we've already talked about the device on a number of different videos in the past. We've done lots of hardware and software stuff on it. We know a lot about it, and therefore, I did think it was worthy of comparing it against it, because a number of you, when looking at this device, and the more we learned about it in the last, you know, six, eight months of this year alone, and it was revealed originally in 2019, We've learned so much about it that with a lot of you waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to put your hard-earned money down and get it, a number of you have seen that 3018XS and gone, hmm, lovely, well that's a tempter. Now, now this has arrived, things have changed. Since it was originally revealed, it was going to have 2.5 GBE on board. Um, it was you know, purported to be a very, very similar price to that of the 3018XS. And as it's become closer to being revealed and now physically here, we now know that it is a 10G solution and that these are actually a little bit more distinctive in price. There's about 200 nicker or so between them in terms of price, but it does change on you know where you shop around and where you're going to buy it. And for a number of you, you were already looking at the 3018XS at a very, very top tier. Maybe you're not going to take advantage of 10GBE, maybe... You know, the CPU inside, you're looking at a Pentium versus that of a Xeon. And a number of you were just kind of on the fence about it. So we want to compare them today. But before we go any further, let's knock out what they've got in common. They both utilize DSM to a very, very high degree. They both support DDR4 ECC memory, uh, with both of them arriving with 8 gig by default. And I believe both of them can be upgraded all the way up to 32 gig officially. Now, they've both got their own official memory from Synology that supports a 2,666 megahertz. On top of that, they're both PCIe upgradable. They're, they've both got multiple LAN ports, although there's a giant difference there between them. And both of them take advantage of DSM to a very high regard, as I've already said. With virtualization, uh, with uh, Synology's virtual machine uh, manager software, you've got surveillance with surveillance station, I believe, 8.2 at the moment, with three hopefully tucked around the corner along with DSM 7.2 please soon you've got the collaboration suite of office mail chat calendar drive and more you've got huge backup options in hyper backup and active backup suite you have got a great six bay solution that can also be expanded by a number of drives as well but there's another big difference between them one that really did annoy me when i first heard about it and they're both in the excess series so you get five years of manufacturer's warranty as well and a lifetime of software support what i'm saying is Regardless of which one of these you go for, you are looking at a great system. But it's not all perfect. There's lots of reasons that one is better than the other. And I will tell you right now, in most ways, not all, the newer 1621 is the better NAS. So let's go through the main five things. First, we're going to talk about price and value, kind of one and two there. Because there is a big difference between price and value. Obviously, as I've already alluded to, the 1621XS is the more expensive of the two. Again, arriving about 1600 Nick and maybe 1650. Um, that's with your tax in your local area. It's a large chunk of change. You are getting a lot of hardware inside that, and I'm sure it's already said it on the screen. You are looking at a Xeon powered NAS. Uh, it's got NVMe assisted cache inside. It's got 10 GBE on board and a Xeon and DDR4 ECC memory inside. With PCIe upgradability and a five year warranty, you're looking at a large amount of hardware there. And that's that difference there between price and value, what you get for your money. I'll also run DSM 7. Uh, and 6.2, of course, currently with us, to a higher regard. The 3018XS is a good NAS. It's got a great CPU, and it was highly recommended when it first arrived, and I still recommend it now. But it, despite that lower price tag, it is still a bit of a blow that we are looking at a device that's got four 1GBE LAN ports. Bit annoying. This has already got two 1GBEs as well, as long as that 10GBE as well. It arrives with that great CPU inside that ranks quite high on CPU benchmark, but it is still um, a Xeon dual-core based processor there. And this higher clock speed overall, and it's a quad-core Xeon, it just takes it that bit further, to be honest. And that's 
kind of what you're going to feel long term. And this is one of those times where even on day one, you're going to feel the difference. Because that Xeon, although it is older generation, it is still going to give you a lot more throughput. And that is, a, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about software later on. But ultimately, in terms of price, obviously the 3018XS wins the price battle. But in terms of value and what you get for your money, due to the lack of 10 GBE, the lack of NVMe SSD cache, I'm going to have to give that to the, uh, the new 1621XS+. Plus. Now, again, if you are hitting your limit as it is in terms of your budget, and you're not going to be maxing that device out, and you're going to have to leverage uh, how much you're spending on uh, internal hardware and performance against storage, that's a different conversation that we'll touch on later on. Next, let's talk about internal performance. We've already talked about a lot of the hardware distinctions between these two devices. And because of this is uh, the, the 1621's um, uh, Xeon-based processor, you're already looking at a head start in terms of general day-to-day -day internal performance. The fact that it's got those two NVMe bays based inside there allows you to even further improve uh, commonly accessed files, files that are shared across the network, basically smaller files. If you're running VMs, you're going to feel that difference. If you're running regularly shared um, folders that are a drive that's being accessed by multiple users at any given time, chances are that will also benefit from SSD caching internally. And let's not overlook the fact that this device has that 10 GBE that we'll talk about later on. But the system is going to do a much better job. Even if you install a 10G card inside the 3018XS, if you install a 10G card inside that with that money that you're saving, maybe sticking a two-port card, the system isn't going to handle that data internally as fast. Now, the money that you're saving on the 3018 does open the door to installing that dual-purpose card from Synology, the uh, E10M20, which is a 10G port and two NVMe SSD caching bays inside. But you're still going to have that CPU, which is incredibly high-performing, and certainly it will work with that card very, very well, although there is arguable uh, compatibility issues as well. Do check out the compatibility list to, to learn more on that. But... Ultimately, in terms of internal performance, you're always going to get more out of this because of those resources that are available. Even if you're not maxing them out, the Synology system and its intelligent background caching and flushing system that's built into DSM will improve how that ha the data is handled with utilizing as much resources as it has available, even if you're not maxing the system. So next, let's talk about external performance. Now, we're going to handle this in two separate ways because... The glaringly obvious 10 GBE means externally you're getting a thousand meg. Okay, you're getting a thousand meg. You've got a couple of one Gs as well, and you've got a PCIe upgrade slot to add more ports, like the new two-port 10 GBE card, the E10G20 T2. But the external performance is going to be based on the drives you use. That makes a lot of people overlook that. They assume they can stick any old drives inside and get a thousand megs. Now, the right RAID plays its part between both of these devices. They're both six bays, so they've both got the same base storage capability. They both support the latest 16 and 18 TB drives, um, which means a huge amount of storage potential even in a RAID 6 environment. We've done a speed test for this where we did a RAID 6 on the 1621XS with um, AES uh, encryption enabled, and we still got great fantastic speeds out there do check out that video i'm not going to spoil it but the 3018xs even if you install that card that we mentioned earlier on to try and get that improved performance externally you're not going to hit the same highs not just because of the 10 gbe port the 10 gbe port plays its part but the xeon based processor inside there is the better of the two in terms of general file handling and having a fantastic floating point so the external performance is better on the 1621xs for two reasons one obviously because of the 10 gbe but two because the system can deliver that throughput successfully if with the same ssd or hard drive media inside with and without cache it will provide the same if not better than the 3018 to a network for lots of connected individuals and that's important because you can use a 10G equipped system or a Thunderbolt 10G adapter, connect into the device and then get that throughput directly, that is possible. 
but if you funnel this device into a switch, you're going to have four GBE, or with the upgrade card a few more, feeding into a lag supported switch and lots of connected users. And if you have the same environment on both of these devices, what you'll find is this will provide better per person performance, not just because it's feeding 10G to the network, but even if multiple users are accessing the NAS via the single 10G bandwidth, it will handle multiple users better overall because of the Xeon being so desirable these days in intelligent network attached storage. There's a reason that this also supports RAID F1 from Synology for flash station use as well, because even though it's not a flash station, you can utilize this same architecture to a very high degree for flash use, very similar to that of the FS1018. Uh, now, next is storage. Storage is kind of one of the things about these two devices where the 3018 seemingly takes a very big lead because they're both six bay devices, sure, but years down the line throughout that five year warranty or later or earlier, you're gonna start running out of space. A lot of people go for a, um, a six bay device because of the desirability of RAID 6. And RAID 6 is, you know, your two disks of failure and you need some good hardware to get some good throughput there. A standard Celeron handling a RAID 6 will feel the pinch. It will use a lot of its resources comparable to that of other RAIDs um, and inevitably lower the uh, performance. And if you enable encryption, then even more so. so um, a device that can handle that storage on day one and day 1000 is important. And the expandability of these two devices is, is where we see the 3018 take a good lead. The reason being that they can both be expanded with the 16 being expandable with two of the five bay expansions, the DX517 expansions, and you can attach two of them via eSATA on the rear of the device quite easily. And on those two ports there on the rear, you add five, you add five, and you can expand your RAID, your SHR, which is supported on both, neither one of them, um, sorry, uh, your um, standard RAID, neither one of them support SHR, very important, they do not support SHR. Um, but this device, if you attach those two five bay expansions via eSATA, expand your RAID over them, so get that RAID 6 to grow and absorb the other storage, you have got 16 maximum bays of storage, each one SATA based, each one bringing you um, up to the latest 16 and 18 TB drives, which is good to hear. But you are still using two expansions with their own power, both of which are connected via eSATA, screwed in at each end. So you're kind of losing out a little bit there in terms of power consumption, and it's going to take up a lot of space around it, and it's a bit messy in terms of expandability. Now, the 3018XS, on the other hand, that attaches the 12 bay expansion, the DX1215. That is a 12 bay proprietary SAS connection on the rear. So a 12 gig connection for all 12 of those drives expanded onto the system. So that's why this can have up to 30 bays of storage um, because you've got the six inside, you can bang on a 12 bay and then bang on another 12 bay. So two proprietary SAS connections mean this device with 30 drives of potential storage, there's just more long-term storage potential. Now, each of those five bays are sharing a six gig connection each uh, via eSATA, and you've got 12 bays here that are sharing a 12. So technically, the bandwidth is gonna be narrow, but as long as you use traditional hard drives, you should still be absolutely fine. But in terms of overall storage potential, the 3018 has just got more long-term storage capabilities. Unfortunately, you can't attach 12 bay to this device for physical uh, restrictions. Synology have chosen to go with the two fives. Maybe it's a CPU limitation. The PCIe lanes get all getting taken up, but still nevertheless, is a real shame. Perhaps um, uh, um, Synology can look into expansion cards that use that proprietary expander connection. We have seen um, a lot of the rack mount devices have a slot of the PCIe slots dedicated to the expansion for those bigger rack mount expansions. Maybe that's something Synology can look at to allow desktop users to take advantage of bigger expansion chassis, but still nevertheless, the 3.0 takes the lead in terms of storage overall. So overall, the, the 1621 is just the better NAS for the most part. It loses out in that long-term storage capabilities, 
but in every other regard it does win this battle and if you can spring the extra two three hundred nicker between them in your budget i thoroughly recommend it because remember neither one of them needs to be fully populated on day one and maybe you can scale back that storage have one less hard drive for now and use that money towards upgrading to the bigger device and then down the line when your budget frees up a little bit add an extra drive expand your raid pool but this has been the DS1621XS Plus versus the DS3018XS. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do check out the link in the description to take you through to NAS Compares. Buy your NAS from the guys at Span.com. And don't forget to click like and subscribe to learn more about these video, uh, more about these NASs and help me make more videos for you. I'll see you next time.